Hello every modeler. In today's video, I will try to show you how the cockpits of World War II aircraft are painted. You don't always have to use all the described procedures, but I hope that you will choose some of them in your next model. We will start with the cockpit of 148 Spitfire Mark I from the Edward kit in the Profipec series. We will clean the cockpit parts and assemble individual parts that will be well colored. It may not always be in procedure with the construction manual, so it is necessary to think carefully about the individual step in advance. For good manipulation with parts during painting, it is good to glue wires or toothpicks on the parts for better attachment. We can also use adhesive gum ticket. It is great to first spray the parts with sulfacer, which guarantees better color adhesion. I delight to paint more for spraying and gradually paint the parts with a weak current. The air pressure in the gun is about 0.8 bars. This is followed by the first spray with the basic shade. To dilute GSIC series paints, I mostly use Mr. Color Leveling Thinner that dries more slowly than the classic Mr. Color Thinner. I lighten the basic shade of the interior color by mixing white into the original color and spray the centers of larger areas and protruding details. I follow the rule that the larger the area is, the more lightened the center is and even more light the flat protruding or light higher. Small details, such as the side, deserve the same attention. If there are more colors in the cockpit, we will use Tamiya tape to mask it.
the moment, I will use a flat surface which is an ideal base for a technique called the dry brush. I will use oil paint which I squeezed on a piece of cardboard to get rid of excess oil. It is necessary to start from the basic shade, in this case from green. I mix a very light green color. I use flat brush with fine hair for application. I thoroughly wipe the mixed paint from the brush into a paper towel and then I lightly run the brush over the protruding details. The oil paint must be dry and the part sprayed with a thin layer of glossy varnish. This will give us a clear basis for another technique called wash. I don't usually use universal washes, but I mix them from oil paints by myself. Again, I start from the basic shade and add raw umber and black to it. I dilute the mixture in white spirit thinner. I recommend using white spirit from model paint manufacturers which dries faster than white spirit primarily intended for artistic oil paints. I apply very thin mixture into the recesses and thanks to the glossy surface the paint flows around all the details. Let the wash dry for at least one hour and then wipe off the excess paint with your brush. 
if wash is already too dry, moisten the brush in white spirit. Where we can't get with the ear brush, we use brush moistened with white spirit for repairs. This is followed by coloring of the details. We use Vallejo and AK interactive colors. It is important to add a retarder to the thinner, which slows down drying and the colors combine better. I mark brushes for painting the details and use them only for this purpose. When they wear out, I peel off the tape and use it on wash. I learned this trick from top modeler David Bielek. If we drag somewhere, nothing happens. The paint can be easily scraped off the solid surface with a toothpick. Some details, such as the padding of the seat, can be shaded straight away. From black and white, we mix several shades of grey, which we gradually layer on top of each other from the darkest. Thanks to the use of the retarder, the individual layers are joined.
I also use the modeling 50 shades of grey on the headrest. Some details can easily be lightened again with oil paints using the dry brush technique. This is followed by painting the abrasions, the so-called chipping. First, paint the abrasions with a light shade of the base color. After that, we add dark gray abrasions, but to a much lesser extent. The kit also contains decal stencils. I used Mr. Mark software from GSI to apply them. Colored phototech parts can also be used directly from the kit, but I also pay some attention to them. First, I spray them with matte varnish and then I highlight the details with the dry brush technique. For gluing, I use a thin cyanoacrylate glue applied with a scalpel tip or toothpick.
belts must be assembled and above all, shaped before gluing to the model. For gluing, use cyanoacrylate glue again. When shaping, be careful not to peel off the paint. and then just put it all together Another model that I have prepared for you is the P51D Mustang from the Revel in 132 scale. Again, I divided the cockpit into several sets and the basic coloring is almost the same, only using different shades of colors. For dry brush, I lightened the green by adding white and yellow. Wash is from the same shades but slightly darker and due to the size of the parts it is necessary to apply it in larger quantities.
This kit also contains cockpit stencils. Little more work needs the cockpit door where I will try to intimate the wood. After spraying the interior green, we spray the wooden parts with the sail color. Apply a part of the transparent decal of imitation wood from the company AGW to the water moistened substrate and carefully settle thanks to the product Mr. Mark Software. Excess decal is cut off and removed together with masking tape. After thoroughly drying the decal, spray the surface with black Vallejo paint. Carefully scrape off the black color with the tip of a toothpick. We will use masking and we will spray the fuel tank straight away.
dry brush and wash procedures follow. With multicolored sets we have to work hard to do the camouflage. I no longer recommend painting large with a brush on this scale. The kit does not contain belts, so I used a universal set of phototech belts from the Edward Steel series. Some belts need to be adjusted. However, when cutting be careful of damaging the color on the phototech parts. The instrument panel is very nice in the kit, however it needs the same care as the other parts of the cockpit.
among the decals we can find the instrument panel in one piece. I cut it and applied the decal in parts with the help of Mr. Mark software. The result is more accurate than applying the decal in one piece. We will also not forget to finish the details. I imitate the glass on the devices with a two component clear epoxy. In the end, I kept a detailed set from the company's IRS cast cockpit Hokewoo 119D in one 30 second scale.
Phaser spray is required to adhere the paint to polyurethane and phototech parts. Then we proceed with the procedures already described, only with different shades and colors. We don't have stencils available this time, so we will try to finish some of them ourselves. I applied a little powder pigment to the cockpit floor and fixed it with pigment fixer.
challenge for me is always painting the seat and belt. I always start from the deepest point, in this case by padding on the seat. After the basic brown color, I lighten the raised areas by adding red and yellow. Don't forget the retarder, which allows the applied layers to blend. Finally, I darken the basic brown black and highlight the shadows in the recesses. I proceed similarly when coloring belts, only here, after the primer, I first paint the shadows in a darker shade and then the light surfaces. server on the buckles will come up the very end. I paint the phototech dashboards just like the other parts of the cockpit. I won't miss anything. We have the devices printed on film, we just have to paint them on the other side.
I cut the painted film and stick it to the phototech part from below with cyanoacrylate glue. Again, be sure to pay attention to details such as the side or the instrument panel cover. Thank you for your attention and I hope I at least inspired you with something. Next time we will look at the coloring of the cockpits of modern aircraft and ejection seats.